Hi guys and welcome back to Passing Move and for today's episode, the last episode for the Premier League series, we've got West Ham, 20th team in table in terms of alphabetical order, so we've covered every single Premier League team here uh, in terms of tactics and team guys. So West Ham a very interesting team to take over um, and uh, actually we'll talk about that more. Um, in terms of what the tactics and team guide is uh, and what we'll be covering this episode, it really is just in the title. We'll be trying to set you up with the best tactics, best formation, best instructions, how to get the best out of your squad overall, really. Uh, and uh, in terms of the team guide, it is, of course, maybe uh, players who to, uh, who to sell, who to keep, uh, players that you might want to build your team around, players that are disposable, um, and maybe just areas that need some strengthening within your squad. Um, and obviously we'll just quickly skim through some of these tabs as well, um, but we'll try and keep it as short as possible. So, uh, West Ham themselves, uh, they, the board do expect you to be a mid-table team, which is very doable with the squad that you've got. I think you've got a generally good squad, but like a lot of uh, Premier League teams or teams in general, you don't have a lot of squad depth. Uh, that's an area where you can improve. But your first team certainly good enough to become a mid-table team. Uh, the, the, the board are actually giving you sort of a... Uh, some leeway by expecting you to be a mid-table team because the uh, prediction from the for the season uh, preview uh, for the English Premier League is actually eighth place. Uh, so you're just a spot away from Europa League football. And if you ask me, I think you could just about edge Europa League football if you do manage to you know bring out the best out of this West Ham squad, of course. Um, and uh, I think I think you could just about do it if you're smart enough. You could definitely overtake Everton. I don't think Everton have. A, they do have a decent squad too, but I don't think they're any more special uh, than your West Ham squad. And so, uh, you know, if you get the right results in the right times, uh, you should be able to squeeze in some European football as well and obviously build from there. Uh, so West Ham themselves uh, have been sort of a... have always sort of been a mid-table team in truth. Up and down, really, as the history suggests. They've gone down to the championship in 04 and in 2011-2012. But since then... So just uh, consistent mid-table performances. So you do want to go back to this uh, sort of uh, position for this season at least, which is seventh, and get your Europa League football again. Help you with your finances, and of course you can improve the squad and uh, try and squeeze into Champions League spots as well. Capacity 60k in the in the your stadium, so you do have a lot of uh, potential there. In terms of titles, you don't have any other than the championship. So Premier League, that's where you want to try and build some history and win some Premier League titles. You can definitely do with some adding to the FA Cup uh, comp competitions. For example, 1980 was the last time. And the League Cup, you've never won. And if you do win, you do get Europa League football. So just keep that in mind. Euro Europa League football, uh, you can win that by winning the FA Cup or the League Cup. But of course, the League Cup is a bit more realistic. Community Shield back in 64, so really no recent history uh, and you do that's what makes West Ham such a, an exciting team to take over because you can build a lot on this West Ham team and you have a bit more of a solid foundation than you do with so-called smaller teams who uh, you know don't necessarily have the history and also don't have the squad so this is you know if you're looking for mid table mid, -table, mid -table team to take over West Ham are your team. So one of the first things I like to do is actually have a look at the staff, uh, you know, sort them out properly. But we'll be working with what we've got here today. But just having a look over here, you could clearly see you're lacking in a lot of areas. The physio seems to be okay, but scouting and coaching department seems to need a lot of work. You don't actually have an assistant manager in the start of the game. Now that's kind of a good thing because you get to pick your own assistant manager. Um, and you know you don't have to fire anyone to hire someone that you want so it's kind of a good thing but at the same time uh, no one that you can necessarily rely straight away from the get-go um, but yeah we, I actually go to the coaching team and see who has the best judgment of ability so naturally and uh, quite normally it is your head of youth development he's got Terry Wesley 13 and 15 for judgment ability and judgment potential so we'll be trusting his opinion of our players uh, while we have a look through the squad to try and see where we can get the best out of these players and who maybe we need to try and build around and whatnot um, but obviously if you get an assistant manager you could possibly do uh, with better judgment of ability and potential of course even the head of youth development can do with some improvement um, his personality of balance is not ideal you need someone who has a good personality balance is okay of course as it suggests but you do want a proper personality determined or professional so that rubs off to your youngsters but anyway that's an entirely different uh, video so another thing I like to do is actually head down to the under 23s and under 18s and just see is there anyone that I necessarily 
uh, can promote to the first team. So Daniel Henry seems to be the best in terms of uh, ability by the looks of it. Skybet League One player though, so we don't want him. We don't want to promote him. Tony Martinez, Skybet League One. No one necessarily close. No championship players. Uh, so that seems to be okay. No one to really necessarily bring up. Next into this, actually sort them up by age and see is there anyone over age who shouldn't be in the first uh, in these squads. So it looks like Henry's here, but he's only here because he's out for four to five months. Uh, we can promote him to the first team and decide what to do with him. Uh, Snodgrass, of course, out on loan. Um, I don't think you can actually recall anyone out on loan here at the moment. Reese Oxford, Reese Burke. I don't, I don't believe you can. Oh, Reese Oxford, you can. Injured three weeks to two months. Championship player though, so you, you're better off not recalling him. Josh Cullen? No. Alright, so that's at least you know our first team squad at the moment. So, uh, next thing to actually do is obviously have a look at your first team squad. No major injuries to this West Ham squad, I think. Uh, just three to seven weeks for Antonio. Coyote, four weeks to two months. Everyone should just be back. It uh, should be just about back uh, by the beginning of the season, so you should be alright. Saka here, three weeks to two months, and Henry four and five months. So he's might he might be your only worry, and you could bring in someone to replace him. But we'll even see if he's involved in the first team. Um, Age-wise, though, you seem to have a decent blend of young players, prime players, and sort of uh, I guess overage players. But uh, it's more about you know what you are looking for in your squad. So if you ask me, I like to have a squad of 22 players, a starting 11 of leading world-class or even star players, and the backup 11 of uh, youngsters who have potential to become leading star and world-class players. Uh, youngsters though that are ready for Premier League action. Uh, you know you don't want to bring in a youngster who's he has potential to be a world-class player. Uh, you're bringing him in for your first team, but he's not actually ready for the division that you're playing in. It just doesn't make any sense. You can bring him in for your younger teams and hope he becomes a better player later but we're looking for first team players at the moment uh, so 22 is the ideal number two players per position to compete with each other I feel like that brings out the best out of the squad and uh, gives it a good balance as well so you've got 24 which is good to see at least you have got the numbers the question is do you have the right numbers in the right areas and are they of the right quality um, so next thing to do is actually sort by ability you can quickly highlight the best 11 players of the squad and try and squeeze them into the same side um, by the looks of it, that's for Hernandez to Noble. This is a, well, you don't have an assistant manager, but it's normally assistant manager's report. So you, the better thing to do is actually go through each player individually. And I've already done that, so I know what formation we'll be working with. But I'm just trying to give you a general idea. Uh, and if you can have a look quick, quickly at the formation, uh, at the positions these players are playing in, it looks like your best formation is actually the 4 2 3 1. If you have a general look at the uh, positions of your squad overall, you can also see it is a bit of a 4-2-3-1. You could possibly play two defensive midfielders if needed. Um, but overall, a 4-2-3-1 seems to make the most sense. So now that we know our formation and we know you know what how many players we need per position, we actually can go through each individual um, member, uh, squad member, and see who's good enough and who's not. So Joe Hart's on loan. I don't believe you can buy him. Now he should return to Manchester City, but his contract ends in 2019, so he's someone that you could keep an eye on in the future if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, you're paying half his wages, which isn't bad at all. 52k seems to be a good. 50k is about a good average wage to be paying for, um, you know, your whole squad really uh, for a mid-table team. Uh, you don't want to really hit those triple sort of digits, triple thousands and whatnot. Um, if that even makes any sense. But yeah, Joe Hart, first team goalkeeper without a doubt. England international, 30 years of age. Uh, some would say that maybe a hint too old, but goalkeepers are normally can play longer. His real issue in terms of the goalkeeper position is just the first touch, but otherwise his attributes are solid, his personality is solid. Um, and coach report says that he is a good player for most Premier League sides and that's sort of the, the bar that we want to set. We don't want any decent Premier League players, we want to build a squad of good Premier League players and then the build on that to find a squad of leading players and then obviously world class and whatnot. Uh, but we have to set a minimum bar of good players for the starting team. So Joe Hart's definitely that and that's good to see but his backup Adrian doesn't seem to be as good in quality. Same age, uh, fans really like this player for some strange reason. I actually went through his history earlier and he's just been at West Ham for about five seasons now uh, so he must have done something special to win over your hearts really but yeah championship player 
definitely needs to move on. He's not good enough for the first team. He's on 50k wages. Consider the backup. That's a huge amount of wages to be playing someone you, you, to be paying someone that you don't expect to play too much. 10.5 value. So if you do send for that amount and get 50k off your wages as well, your wage budget, uh, then you'd have um, you know money that you can actually invest in the better young goalkeeper. Could eventually overtake Joe Hart. Just keep in mind though that Joe Hart isn't your actual player. He's just a loan player. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're considering numbers and whatnot. That Joe Hart's only a temporary number and next season you will have to bring in a better goalkeeper so you could keep the balance as is now or you could of course be ruthless sell Adrian bring in the youngster with potential and next season bring in a starting 11 goalkeeper as well and that balance will sort you know that will sort the balance out of your goalkeeping spots but at least you have the two uh, the numbers that are needed which is two uh, and that's not a priority area that needs to be addressed the priority areas that need to be addressed are the ones where you're lacking in numbers and then you can start to see whether you can bring in uh, better quality players but I think if you even have a look at the team report there is a lack of overall depth uh, as I mentioned your first team squad sword your starting 11 is in uh, but the backup 11 are not you need better quality and that's just proved by here Joe Hart and Adrian Hart is a first choice uh, goalkeeper but Adrian is not good enough for the Premier League uh, right backs it seems like Zabaleta and Sam uh, Byram is your are your options really Byram is possibly a winger as well if you ask me, he could really do both jobs. Normally, when I have a winger playing in the right-back spot, their positioning or marking or tackling is off, but he seems to have good attributes over, overall. Uh, and he can definitely do the winger job and do the right-back spot, so hits right-back position. So uh, he's definitely a versatile player who's is perfect to have in your squad, because uh, especially, you know, we'll reveal the tactics in just a moment, but he'll suit your side quite perfectly, Sam, here. Um, in terms of the actual other right backs so I don't think there's anyone else I feel like this is right there's just Zabalet and Sam so we can actually go ahead with that I think I don't think Man Antonio is a winger doesn't seem to be anyone else we'll just assume Zabaleta and Sam uh, so Zabaleta is definitely your first choice right back a good player for most Premier League sides a bit slow is apparently some area concern acceleration pace isn't that great but otherwise he's a very capable uh, right back um, he can even be a wing back in truth uh, but yeah model professional experience international caps to his name 20, 20 mil and you're paying 75k wages so he's valued really highly a key player for squad and I feel like he is a good player to have in your team at the moment um, but yeah, definitely just try and partner whoever his, his centre backs alongside and make sure that player is fast to cover for him. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you don't have to worry too much about the the the, the pace. Uh, um, hopefully, you know if you have players surrounding him who can cover him, he'll be okay. But yeah, good player for most Premier League sides, so we consider them to be our first choice right back. And in terms of his backup, Sam, unfortunately, as good as Sam is, as we mentioned, in terms of his versatility and whatnot, he is just a championship player. So you have an option to be absolutely ruthless and uh, move Byram on. Do not sell him, if you ask me. That's not my advice. Uh, you just send him out on loan. I think he's already played a number of games for West Ham, so you will be expecting sort of a... A role in the, in the squad this season but really he's not ready enough for the Premier League unless our um, head of youth developments you know uh, judgment is incorrect he's just a championship player if you send him out alone for one season he should come back to you as a Premier League player um, and you can definitely just bring you don't have to actually buy anyone just bring in someone on loan to replace Sam just for the season and hope that Sam comes back to you ready for the first team uh, and he would definitely be able to overtake um, Zabaleta as well and so that would suit you quite a bit uh, but of course you could show some faith in him and hope that he quickly develops into a decent Premier League player he is just a backup so it's not a huge decision um, uh, you definitely got Zabaleta there to rely on and Sam's just you know a backup player he'd be playing whenever Zabaleta is injured or out of form uh, or even in, you know if you do like to rotate in cup competitions you could do that too centre backs you've got a number of them Fonte, Reed. Um, Collins, Agbona, Daniel, Henry, and I think that's about it. I don't assume anyone else can be a centre back. I think, all right, Declan apparently he seems to be okay in the centre back position. Um, we we'll consider him a centre back since we aren't playing any defensive midfielders in our formation. And I think that's it. Everyone else I would assume is not. So there you go. You've got a, quite a few number of them, but the question is here um, do you have the right quality? So Fonte is a good player for most Premier League sides. 
Uh, Winston Reed is a good player for most Premier League sides as well. And Ogbonna is also a good player for most Premier League sides. I would have loved to have included all three of these players in the same 11. But unfortunately for them, uh, we've got better options in terms of formation. At the same time, Ogbonna is also happy to be a rotation option. Now, 70k for a rotation option is a bit too much money. Um, but he is a very capable backup. And we'll go with a trusted Fonte and Reed centre-back pairing. Uh, and Ogbono can be a backup and um, you know maybe if you decide to move Fonte on a little bit later on you could definitely have Ogbono as the first choice immediate replacement 29 four years of four years younger uh, and he would you know definitely partner Reed quite well too but that leaves you with uh, another three more center backs you only need uh, actually two more you need four center backs you've got six uh, James Collins is a championship player and has susceptibility injuries personally i never invest in anyone who has an injury problem um so that's a bit of an area of concern the other backup doniel here is a skybet league one player 24 years of age it says he'll improve but the likelihood is that he won't he's out for four to five months like we mentioned earlier and declan reese is just a skybet league one player so none of the actual other backups other than ogbonna are good enough for your first team so uh you should uh, try and move james collins on 2.2 million 35k wages for a rotation option you can bring the answer with potential or even a lone player he's been at west ham for quite some time um you know with a bit of a break there for aston villa uh but yeah if you ask me not good enough to be, even be your backup and um you could aim for better but attributes wise he's very suited to the center back role his personality is good as well for the squad resolute uh and his player traits aren't too bad other than maybe tries long range passes um so yeah you might want to inv invest in that henry you could once he's fit you could sell him to be honest 24 years of age like we mentioned unlikely to improve you could get two million there for his money uh canadian international apparently as well declan risto you should show some, show some faith and send him out on loan he does have potential to become a first team player apparently but at the moment just a sky league one player and you can do with better backup but the good news is once more you've got the numbers so it's not a high priority area to address just yet cresswell and arthur here uh, Cresswell seems to be your first choice left back, a good player for most Premier League sides. Attribute wise, he's perfect as well, very suited. I love a fullback that can actually cross uh, and fairly ambitious. He gets forward whenever possible, curls the ball, which is a great attribute to have for a crosser. And he's an England international with two caps to his name. Uh, so you could definitely consider him as your first choice option. Arthur seems to be the perfect uh, you know, backup player in terms of his age and his potential ability. But unfortunately for us, once more, his ability is a championship player. Now, this is another time where you have to sort of make a decision. Do you be ruthless, move him out on loan and bring in another loan player temporarily who's ready for the Premier League uh, and then hope that Arthur becomes good enough for your squad next season? Or do you show some faith in Arthur and hope that he quickly becomes a Premier League player and uh, a capable backup? to Aaron Cresswell. Uh, but either way, whatever decision it is, once more, your first team starting 11 player is sorted and you've got the numbers. So once more, not a priority um, a position to invest in. We're looking at central midfielders now. Um, since we're considering a 4-2-3-1 formation, we need four central midfielders and we need two attacking midfielders. That's a, that's a total of six. We already considered Declan as a cent uh, center back. Noble, Obiang, uh, Edmondson, Fernandez, Arnautovic should be a left midfielder, Said you could say the same, Lanzini is an attacking midfielder, I use a left winger, Carroll, Hernandez and Saka are all strikers as well. So in terms of numbers, this is where you're a bit short, you've got five, you just need one more and by the looks of it, you just need a backup to Lanzini. Uh, so in terms of trying to squeeze in the best of these players together, it seemed to make the most sense to actually squeeze in uh, Koyate. Uh, no, no, not Noble, sorry, Aubameyang and Lanzini into the same squad uh, or in the same starting eleven. The problem is that Noble expects first team football and this is a bit of an area of concern. To be honest, he's a model professional, pers perfect personality. His attributes are very good for central midfielder as well, especially in the position that he's, pl uh, the role that he's playing in. 30 years of age, you can't ask for sort of a better leader, I suppose. And the fans love him as well. The problem is he's not better than Obiang. And Koyati adds a bit of a better balance to your overall starting 11 and your squad too uh, than Noble might do. Uh, now you have obviously an option to play him out of his role to be honest and he could probably do a bit of a decent job there but it just seems to play it seems to make sense to play Koyate there. So if you just go through each individual player all of your central midfield is actually the best depth that you've got. Koyate is a good player for most Premier League sides. Noble's a good player for most Premier League sides. Aubameyang's the same. 
Uh, I think Emerson, em, Edmondson here, Fernandez is the only weakness, and Zini is a good player and possible to become a leading one, and so that's uh, you know another place that you might want to consider. Uh, Fernandez is a Skybet Championship player, so not even good enough. So again, I think maybe this is the key area to invest in. Uh, you need a backup to Lanzini, and Fernandez is not a capable backup. Uh, and that's maybe two positions that you want to address, central midfield and attacking midfield. But at least you know if you do consider playing Aubameyang and Obiang and uh, Koyate in the central midfield, you've got a ca very capable backup in Noble. I think both Pedro and Koyate are expected first. Nah, Koyate is a rotational option. He he he's okay. Seems to be okay with it. Um, but uh, really, like I mentioned, he uh, he gives better. Uh, balance to your squad so we'll talk about that in just a minute when we go into tactics but at least even if you consider Fernandez a first team player uh, you need an attacking midfielder backup to Lanzini so in terms of wingers you've got Arnautovic, Said, Antonio uh, and you've also got Ayu and I think wasn't there someone else if you do consider Sam as a right winger this that's also an option of course but I would say just keep him in right back because that's where we kind of need him a bit more I suppose uh, having said that, it looks like Antonio's got no real backup. So, anyways, um, this is where you do have a bit of a ch choice to make. So, uh, Andre Ayu is a left winger. Uh, Arnotovic is uh, either side, really. And Antonio is also a right winger. And you've got Said, who's uh, a left winger, or possibly even an attacking midfielder. Now, in terms of quality, Antonio is a good player for most Premier League sides. Arnotovic is the same. And uh, Ayu is also a good player for most Premier League sides. The problem is that Sayed is just a Skybet League 1 player. So you should be sending him out on loan and bringing in a capable right winger by the looks of it. Since you've got three left wingers. Uh, and this is where you have a bit of a decision once more to make. Ayu is expecting first team football. The same can be said about Arnautovic. And I would assume Antonio is also the same. So if you ask me, Arnautovic is actually on incredibly high wages. 100k. Like I mentioned, you kind of want to just be giving everyone about 50k wages for, for the players. I don't think you should be going ever more than 75k to be honest even for a first team option uh, but either way it seems to be like you've got the money so why not i suppose uh, but you could definitely be giving that 100k to an actual leading player for most premier league sides but either way given their ability uh, you do want to squeeze in the best players possible, but it seems like they're all just about the same ability. Uh, and if you ask me in terms of what suits our tactics a bit more, it would make sense to actually partner uh, Antonio and Ayu down each flank. Arnautovic, uh, he's a bit of a strange player in the sense that he's an inverted winger. Uh, he can also play as a winger apparently. He's either footed, so that would normally suggest that he can be an inverted winger or even an inside forward for that matter. But the problem is, as a winger, he lacks the work rate. And as an inverted winger or even an inside forward, he lacks the decision making and possibly a little bit of the composure. So it's a serious problem. I'm not really sure why West Ham invested him in the truth. Uh, I think they bought him for quite a bit of money as well, 20 million. It just doesn't seem to make too much sense. And you will need to show better decision making than you know previous West Ham managers, I suppose. So if you ask me just for the sake of tactics in terms of abilities and whatnot and attributes and all that sort of business, it makes sense to just have Ayu on the left with his left foot and Antonio with his right foot on the right. And both are very capable in their attributes. The problem is that you would want to retrain Antonio uh, to stop cutting inside from both wings because we are playing him as a winger. Your other option is, of course, to play Arnautovic on the right instead with Ayu. And that way you could have someone who doesn't naturally cut inside to just play him in the winger role. Um, but yeah, try and build a team who doesn't rely on his work rate. So if you play him on the right, just bear in mind Zabaleta's uh, lack of pace. And if uh, Mar Arnautovic isn't covering him in terms of work rate, that is another area where you might be, some, you know, concerned some some teams might actually um exploit that of course uh, but yeah you also have to keep in mind how high his flair and uh, aggression is and that could help your team too so uh, a bunch of decisions to make but really you've got the numbers there at least as well in terms of the you know you need four wingers you've got those four but a bit of depth is needed instead of uh, where was that player where's he gone Said, that's the one uh, you could just bring in another backup to Antonio instead and that way there's a bit more balance two right wingers two left wingers and that's it but there will be a bit of an area of concern just like we mentioned in the center midfield uh, and the, le the left wing position or the wingers in general where some players expect in first team football might not necessarily get it uh, in terms of your strikers we already mentioned attacking midfield needs a backup Lanzini is a very capable first team uh, player though Carol, Hernandez and Saka, you've got three and you only really need two. And in terms of who's the best, it is Javier Hernandez. 
Uh, he's a leading player for most Premier League sides, so he is your strongest player in your current squad. A very capable striker, 29 years of age, a uh, Mexican international per professional personality as well. Attributes are very high, but if you ask me, he is not an advanced forward because he lacks the dribbling, which is very key to advance forward. And of course, passing. Heading is very good, but decision making also comes in mind. When you put him on a poacher role, which is what we're going to be playing him, decision making obviously doesn't disappear, but it's not as reliant as advanced forward. Um, you know, dribbling is not an issue anymore, neither is passing. He's just focusing on finishing off the ball, anticipation, acceleration, you know, which comes with pace. Uh, it all very much suits him playing him as a poacher, and of course, everyone knows him as a fox in the box. Andy Carroll has backup. Is a target man and a good player for most Premier League sides. The problem is he's susceptible to injuries. He's uh, very capable as a target man. If only we were playing one. Uh, I'd love to actually you know, play him as a target man. But really Hernandez is better and he also is just a poacher. So it doesn't make sense to play to, uh, Andy Carroll as a target man. Um, but yeah, very capable backup. Problem is he's expecting first team football. And he's on incredibly high wages at 90k. Uh, and that leaves you with Sakao, who's an advanced forward, decent player for most Premier League size, and actually suits your squad a little bit more. Advanced forward, he can actually play as a target man apparently as well, seems to be a decent option, but if you play him as a poacher, he's very suited to that too. Uh, and it would seem to make most sense to actually keep Sakao, who's on 30k wages, happy with being a rotational football player, uh, than it would mean to keep Andy Carroll. Uh, so if you ask me, he is the disposable one, and you can spend that money on a backup advanced uh, playmaker, attacking midfielder. Uh, Andy Carroll is worth more after all, 25 million and 90k wages. It might actually be a bit tough to sell him considering how much he's earning. Um, but if you do get that off your wage budget and make that money, you could definitely invest in some capable squad depth, uh, in particular the attacking midfield position. So uh, we'll play Hernandez there and that's kind of it. So we've mentioned the squad overall, areas that you might want to invest in, players to keep, players to move on possibly. But all comes down, of course, to your decision making. So in terms of the tactic, this is what we'll be working with. We're actually going with a 4-4-1-1. You could definitely go with a 4-2-3-1 when you're trying to win games or any of that sort of business. But I feel like since we're a mid-table team, you do have to be a hint careful and cautious. Uh, so 4-4-1-1 seems to make sense. In particular, because Antonio and Ayu are very happy to play in the deeper positions. Uh, in terms of the actual roles and what we're going for with the overall tactics. So as you can see, playing a mentality of control, structured team shape, and not too many instructions with just direct passing, title marking, and offside trap. So what we're going for overall is this, uh, a tactic where we play direct type of football. So you want players who are capable of dribbling, players who uh, are shooting a lot, players who... Um, Really, that's kind of it. Dribbling and shooting and crossing is this sort of direct style of football. Uh, and since we're playing that, we've got crossers and wingers, so that helps. Uh, we've got some crosses from deep coming in in the fullback as well. We've got nat normal central defenders. Uh, Jose Fonte seems to be more of a ball playing defender, apparently, or even a defensive centre back than a central defender. Uh, you could definitely consider him in either position. So, if we're playing direct football, defensive centre back naturally hits the ball forward anyway, so it's not a bad problem, you know bad thing to play him that natural thing you also got a ball playing defender if you wanted to i feel like he's lacking in vision and first touch a bit but his passing and technique makes up for it um but very capable as a central defender portuguese international as well i've just sort of just shoot him in as a central defender but you could definitely play him as a ball playing defender if you ask me though it's better off to actually play him uh, in the same side as the roaming playmaker so obiang is actually obiang is actually playing in a bit of an unnatural or uh, you know, a role that he's not too accustomed to. Apparently, he's best as a deep line playmaker on defend, um, but we're not really looking for that. So, uh, you know, it seems to make deep line playmakers, they don't shoot um, as often, and we're trying to avoid players who shoot less often, as it says here. We've got another player who's holding, anyways, and it seems to make sense to play a roaming playmaker who dribbles more and is one of the few roles that actually does that from the middle of defense. Box to box midfielder roams but doesn't dribble um, from the middle of the midfield, sorry, central midfield. Uh, so roaming playmaker is just what we're going for and it seems to make sense to what we're trying to build towards eventually in terms of an overall tactic. Ball winning midfielder is the one player you have in your team that can actually tackle, uh, really hold that midfield together and cover other players. Uh, the dribbling less is a bit upsetting since you're trying to find players who dribble a lot but he will, you know, he's holding, he's doing the dirty work for the team, tackling harder and closing down much more and seems to make sense and that's why I explained why Koyate is a player that you should have instead of Mark Noble because, you know, Noble's not naturally a ball winning midfielder. Uh, and he's got very good attributes for it as well. The other option is, of course, if you do insist on playing Noble, you can play Obiameng here and play Noble as a deep line playmaker on defend. But bear in mind that means you don't have naturally anyone who's doing the dirty work for, dirty work for you. A deep line playmaker won't do the same job as a ball winning midfielder, of course. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, 
And of course, like we mentioned, it's not what we're working towards eventually. Lanzini is in, the, in the, his very natural role of an advanced playmaker. The problem is he shoots less often, but at least he dribbles more. And of course, he is the playmaker of the team. Hernandez in his uh, little less uncomfortable role, but a poacher, which suits the team overall and seems to make more sense. Advanced forwards is actually what dribble, they dribble more, which was what we would like to have. But unfortunately, Hernandez is lacking in the, that area a bit. And so we're just going for a natural poacher. Um, in terms of uh, the, uh, you know, why we're playing with control mentality, I feel like playing on the counter, we don't necessarily have to do that. We're one of the stronger teams in the division. We might not be the best, uh, and we do have to be a bit careful against stronger teams, which is why we're playing with deeper wingers rather than pushing them high up. Um, uh, you know, 4 4 1 1 formation, you could say, is a hint defensive. It's not exactly the most attacking formation. Um, but yeah, I feel like control seems to make the most sense. We'll be wary of teams counter-attacking us and I think we'll be keeping the ball a bit better which helps with the more direct passing. We don't want to just lump the ball forward. We want to be a bit smart with how we're playing. So in terms of team instructions, it's very simple like I mentioned. Uh, I just like to have the three and uh, we'll talk more about that. But really, since I have a small amount of instructions, it seems to make sense to have a team shape of structure. Not only does it give better, obviously, structure to your team, uh, you know, you should be able to, you know, concede less goals and whatnot. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it, it kind of makes sense. I don't play too many team instructions. So playing structured, which seems to let each individual player just follow the each individual role, which is what we're trying to do. We want each player to follow their instructions of, you know, dribbling more. Um, uh, here, you know, dribbling more once more and shooting and all that sort of business. Uh, and at the same time, I feel like when you play with a fluid team shape, the whole team attacks and defends together. And so it makes a bit more sense to have a ton of team instructions when you're doing that. Uh, but since I don't have, like to have too many teams instructions, structured makes the most sense. And that's kind of it. Um, in terms of what you want to be working towards eventually, I feel like the wingers, even the central defense is kind of sorted. You do want to work towards a sweeper keeper eventually. Helps because you're playing an offside trap as well. And if you go on a uh, sweeper keeper on attack, you get the option of dribbling more. And that would suit your overall tactic as well. Even though if you want to be a bit more conservative, you can definitely just go with a sweeper keeper on defend duty. Born in midfielder and roaming playmaker is a very natural combination as well. Uh, helps best. But in terms of your attacking midfielder, shoot less option is shoot less often option is not what you want. And so you do eventually want to go for a sort of partnership where you go with a shadow striker that dribbles more, has, you know, lateral movement, I suppose. Um, you know, the Enganche and Triacortista Tri close down less, which is not what we're looking for. Uh, and uh, advanced playmaker doesn't shoot often, which is not what we're looking for. Attacking midfield is a very neutral role. And so shadow striker seems to make the best. And also a complete forward on support duty would probably bring out a, a lot of, you know, good qualities out of your team. They hold the ball up, they dribble more. Um, and they will work very well with the shadow striker as well. So that's kind of what you want to work towards. Eventually, you could definitely go with wingers pushed up high up the pitch. But that's only if you want to stick to the tactics, which is direct football. This is the sort of aim that you should try and push your team towards. And whenever you invest in players, invest in these roles. Um, that's kind of it in terms of tactics. I think we can quickly cover some other things. We mentioned the first team squad. Dynamics has been overhauled completely. You could definitely do some improvement like match cohesion, but that'll come naturally anyways. Uh, and just be very careful about you know who, to, who you sell and who you don't because of the dressing room. I feel like it's a bit overplayed or overpowered, I suppose, in the new uh, FM18. Uh, you know, I've sold players and brought in other players and the squad will still be happy. So don't think about it too much, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, tactics we covered. Team report, we already mentioned the lack of um, uh, squad depth but decision making is a bit of a concern um, but considering you're playing direct football you don't have to necessarily care too much about passing or decision making you know you're playing obviously it's uh, a bit of a worry but at the same time you're playing you're not trying to play possession football where passing and decision making might be a bit more key the good news is that you've got youth prospects leadership a bunch of depth apparently which is a bit weird why there's overall depth lacking here <laughs> you've got an aggressive and committed squad which is great to see and you could definitely do um you've got a good solid base basically to build on staff like we mentioned already needs a huge amount of improvement training i like to have it on balanced and high during pre-season and then balanced on average during the season itself uh, and then uh, the match preparation we just i just normally have it as a uh, match tactics uh, during pre-season and then during the season itself i just go with whatever my my um, scout actually tells me Medical center, that's another thing. Uh, scheduling, you've got a f decent amount of friendlies here. You can do with better opposition. Um, I normally like to have six friendlies, so I think you're one short. 
Uh, but you should still be able to get a good enough amount of fitness out of your squad there. Opening fixtures are very tough though. Tottenham, Everton and Liverpool in the Premier League. Uh, but you do have a bit of a break here with these teams. You should really dispose of uh, if you hope for Europa League football. You mentioned the Premier League expectations. The FA Cup is fifth round. You enter the third. The League Cup is the second round. And you enter, you, sorry, you enter the second and you, your expectation is the fourth. You should definitely be able to do both. And do not, like I mentioned, take the League Cup lightly. Because you, if you win it, you get Europa League football. Uh, scouting system has been revamped. Any Premier League team should really have their packages on world for youth and senior packages. You can definitely afford it and you can give some money to the scouting budget. Uh, but I don't think the board have limited you in terms of their scouting. There's no restrictions so you don't have to worry too much. And since we're on the board we might as well talk about the money you've got. You've got 32 million in the bank. Uh, to spend but if you ask me I like to have it in the middle leaning towards transfer budget so it's more about 20 million and about 400k in wages or 300 more like 300 um, which the board would be very happy with but obviously money to spend uh, you, you know if you're literally just bringing in the backup attacking midfielder 20, 20 million should definitely bring in a youngster with potential uh, that's plenty of money and of course if you sell like we mentioned Carol even Sakao you'll even have even more money to invest there and in, in your other and in, in other areas of your squad where you might need some depth like we mentioned um, but yeah, yeah that brings us to finances so you do have the 32 million to spend but your overall balance is 47 million so if you do spend it all you only have 50 million in the bank and that might be cutting it a hint too close but bear in mind that you don't you do have some debt as well uh the good news is that you're just paying about 96 916k per month uh until obviously these dates so it's not too heavy debt um but yeah you just have to be a bit careful with the, the debt that the debt that you're paying uh, projections though read good you've got a balance that keep continuously improves turnover sort of jumps back and forth but it seems to be a good amount exponential increases which is a bit of a worry and that probably has to do with your uh, wages that you're giving your current players so you know you might want to cut off some players on high wages that don't deserve it uh, until you're a top team I feel like you shouldn't be paying anyone about the 100k wages and whatnot uh, total wage costs stays relatively the same I suppose uh, but transfer budget does improve and even with just 56 million you should be able to do some decent damage next season if you're smart with the players that you bring in under 23 is the youngsters to look out for we've included the under to in the 18 squad as well but it looks like you've got a fair amount here uh, Kinna, Kinna to about Josh Cullen seem to be good these three you should definitely keep an eye on but down to about Josh Cullen you can trust that at least two or maybe even three of these players if they're good enough can make your first team uh Kinner currently suits your well your current tactics but not your overall your eventual tactics that you're building towards but an advanced playmaker would be welcome for sure and he seems to be a bit of a wonder kid uh, he's not described as that and I don't think he necessarily is but he seems to be or has the potential to become one of the best players at your squad Reese Oxford of course is a player that you want to consider on loan to BMG um, and he should come ready to you next season so bear that in mind if you do invest in the centre back right now that you have Reese Oxford to rely on next season Tony Martin is a Trey Quartista doesn't suit our tactic but you can definitely squeeze him in and adjust his determination of 20 is really good to see and it looks like he's got a bunch of potential as well uh, but really yeah we don't have to go through each individual player just bear in mind some of these might disappoint you and some might exceed expectations and the same can be said about any of these youngsters so just try and give them as much um, you know opportunities as possible possible and see what happens so that's kind of it we've covered every single thing that needs to be covered in truth so uh, if you did enjoy today's episode of course please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2018 content uh, and as always guys thank you all very much for watching